What's up, everybody? It's Leo and Josh with the No Agenda Sports Podcast. Just changed the name. And we got the mock, uh, not mock draft. We have the real draft coming up this week. Super excited, man. We're going to do a couple mock drafts for you all today. Uh, here we go. All right. Can you see it now? Perfect. All right. Cool. 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 All right. As y'all know, we're representing the Texans right now. Um, and we have two trade offers to start it off. So we got the Texans. Obviously, it's our. Uh, they want pick two. The Cardinals are trying to trade up. They are trying to. I don't know what who they're moving up for, but they're trying to trade up. They want to give us their second round pick. They want to give us pick three and Buda Baker. Yeah, that's one. That's that's potential to see what the other one is. The other one is the Colts, um, giving us Buckner, uh, four. The, the second and a 2024 first. And, oh, but they do want to swap seconds. Yeah, yeah. That's and that's a little problematic. Right. Um, we could counter and say we wanted, like, a third and a fourth instead of – and not give up our second. But I don't know. I don't think it makes sense to move back two spots with both of our picks mm-hmm. for only – for Buckner and, uh, and a future first. Right, right. Um, the other side of it is we go Will Anderson as top top of the board, um, which we both kind of think is the right way to go. But for this say, sake, what's the go back to the uh, Arizona pick? Yeah, what do, what do you think? I think that's probably probably the move. That way you secure a game changing uh, safety to play next uh, Petrie. He's still young. He's probably like twenty six though, right? Buda, well, Buda Baker. Uh, Baker, maybe you know somewhere in there. Yeah. Yeah, he's still a younger safety. I'll look it up real quick. But um, yeah, that's probably the the move that I would go with. And they're obviously moving up for. I mean, the problem is they're moving up. They could very be very well be moving up for Will Anderson. So we may lose out on him, but we would pick up a, another impact player at thirty four, which is uh super valuable. So let's see, Buda Baker is. Well, let's just let's just take let's let's just take the trade and you he's twenty seven, so he's still young. All right, yeah, let's take the trade. Yeah, let's accept this. All right, cool. All right. All right. Now we're at pick three. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. Let's oh, not, they let's trade up. Go. So they trade up for a corner. They went up for uh Christian oh, Gonzalez. Wow, they must have a super high grade, like 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 Texans did last year with us, Stingley. So I just I just uh said fuck the trade. You know, we got our guy here. Yeah, I know it was tempting though. What was it? We were able to. They were offering Mike Evans. They were the going. They were going full uh, tank for Caleb mode with yeah, uh, yeah, giving yeah. us Mike Evans and uh, Devin White. But it's just not a position where that really makes sense for so, for the time so, frame. So while we're here, I mean, let's talk about this because I mean, there's a lot of discourse on how crazy it would be for us for the Texans to not tr- uh, draft a quarterback. You know what I mean? And, um, you know, the thought of Will Anderson is, uh, I guess, very, very crazy to some people, man. So, like, what's, what are your thoughts on this? Like, why would you take Will Anderson um, just, you know, as – instead of taking one of these quarterbacks this year, at, you know, with the first pick of the draft for us? Right. So, there's two main factors that kind of fact, that kind of influence my, my view of this. One of them is I just think Stroud is a guy – it's a level of prospect that you can pretty much find in in almost any draft, as long as it's not as a, a crappy draft like last year. But, I mean, you're looking forward ahead, and you know that this team isn't going to be in a place where they're going to be outside of the top ten next year just based on team talent. Like, you could have the greatest draft in the history of football, and they're still all going to be rookies. So while you still may be more competitive and maybe get to, like, five, six wins at best, you're still going to have two first-round picks in position to move up for one of the quarterbacks uh, that'll potentially be there at one or two. And the chances are that both p- teams that are one and two won't of next year won't be in a hundred percent need of a quarterback. Cause it's just the odds of it. Like Chicago was this year where they, they could be drafting uh it could be Carolina falling on their face with Bryce where Bryce gets injured or something happens. But that's, I mean, part of it is that where Stroud just doesn't seem, None of the quarterbacks, Stroud, Richardson, or Levis, none of them, they all have very, uh, very clear uh, issues that wouldn't warrant being drafted in the top five. Probably out of them, you could probably move up for one later, or you can secure one with a hidden hooker at the top of the second, or even potentially a 12 if you feel super bullish. 
Um, the biggest reason for Will Anderson is it gives you – it locks you into the, the wide nine technique. He – I've heard a lot of t- talk about, he, oh, he's not bendy. He didn't really do anything this year. Well, some of the things that come to mind with that are, first of all, he was basically taking body shots all year and just getting the crap kicked out of him because they were asking him to play inside more at the five tech and even like at four I at certain points, which is kind of crazy to me when it's kind of a waste of his talent. But because of Bama, the way Bama was, and they were, they were kind of had a lot of issues on the interior this year, uh, defensive line wise. And they had two guys on the edge that were super talented. And uh, I think it was Braswell and uh, Turner were the two guys on the edge. So they were just trying to be creative and find ways to get all three on the field together. Um, and the crazy thing is, did Will Anderson get his butt whooped when he was inside? Of course, uh, he's not the biggest guy, but he also had some reps against high level competition where he was holding his ground and he wasn't getting completely wiped off the field. Mm-hmm. Um, the thing with Will Anderson is you're getting a high floor player that's that's super, that's got great instincts for the ball, that's more slippery than Bendy, which is fine. There's a lot of picks, there's a lot of edges in the in the NFL right now that people wouldn't quote unquote call super bendy, you know. But he's someone that's got really great feet. Really, there's a story I heard about him with the guys that were training him for his draft, um, for this draft and also off seasons previously where they were doing the uh, parachute drill and the drill where they've got like straps hooked on behind them and he's kind of just driving and kind of working on his explosion and everything. And there was one guy that, that almost had to go, like felt like he almost had to, he almost had whiplash from the force that Will Anderson was creating. And he said that pretty much he's been doing it for a while. I don't remember the guy's exact name, but, it was a situation where he's never dealt with an athlete that was this sudden and this uh, powerful in his explosion. So are there things that Will Anderson needs to work on? Yes. And that's part of the upside where he needs to work on his hands. If he get, it's the thing is like, he's super raw with his hands. Like he has a lot of moves, but there's a lot of things that he can clean up to become more effective. His balance in general is pretty good. He can work on, just attacking different approaches. I mean, kind of, I've seen a lot of games. It's It was hard this year to watch the film a, a ton because he seemed, every time he got to the edge and got a chance to actually rush as an edge rusher, it kind of got to a situation where he wasn't, he kind of had his legs taken out before he even got there because they were tired from getting kind of beat up on the interior. So it was kind of, if you go back and watch junior year and sophomore year, Will Anderson, you can kind of get a cleaner eval of what he'd look like if you, if he basically played, you play him at the wide nine position in uh, D'Amico's, D'Amico's defense. And obviously if Jalen Carter had clean evals in this draft, he would be under consideration in terms of like off the field and like loving football. But there's been a lot of things coming out that he had struggled with his weight. He had issues with uh, loving football and, and, uh, and uh, and just kind of being reckless off the field, which is something you kind of, I mean, you want to a point with your D tackles because it's kind of a crazy position, but it's not not worth it. Number three in this situation, Tyree Wilson's the other player that we've talked about. He's a super talented player. He's probably his value is more in that five to fifteen range, um, maybe even lower, ten to fifteen. If I was being honest, I kind of see him as a similar prospect to uh, Marcus Davenport coming out. Um, the thing with him is he has balance issues. He ends up on the ground a lot when during his rush. Uh, and it just, it's kind of weird that he didn't um, have more of an impact until just this year. And he basically couldn't get on the field at uh, Texas A&M, which really wasn't, they didn't have a ton of edge rushers coming out during his time or a ton of great defensive linemen. So it was kind of strange that he had to transfer in order to play and still only got, what, seven sacks this year? Yeah. Yeah, so that's kind of the thought process on on uh, on our end. Is there anything I, I missed? No, 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 that's pretty much it. And I want to talk about this, the idea that, like, Will Anderson is too small to, like, you know, rush from a wide nine and put his hand in the dirt and stuff like that. I kind of feel like it's kind of nitpicky. He's coming in at six foot three, two fifty three. Um, 
you know, and he still has like a, you know, to me, like, he probably played closer to 6'3, 260 this year. I mean, I for mean, being honest, yeah. And I mean, like, you know, he still has room, room to grow. Like, you know, I think, you know, he definitely can, can put on more weight. You know what I mean? Um, he has a decent front, good frame and, um, Still kind of like low to the ground. I know we talked about that too, as well as like those big guys with those insane movement skills. Like it's hard for their bodies to, I guess, handle all like the torque and like change the direction when they, you know, when you're six foot six, two seventy. And yeah, like, and especially like, with Tyree Wilson, who's a guy that really struggles to keep off the ground because his feet get up under him and kind of get in compromised position. There's a ton of work that he'd have to work on um in order to kind of improve all that and that's like a big it's like teaching a a baby giraffe to like walk differently or something you know it's like a, it's a whole different situation yeah and and one thing that just came out right before our podcast is that there's now injury concerns and eva and medical issues going on with Tyree mm -hmm. that uh that are even pointing more towards Will Anderson being at number 2 which is kind of reflected in the in the gambling odds and yeah. the way that they've shifted but like you get a guy that's six foot three, you know what I'm saying? I think he has relatively long arms, like around thirty four inch arms, I believe. I think yeah, right? some crazy. I think they may even thirty six, some crazy number. And um, thirty five, you know, yeah. And um, you know, you get him, and I mean, you know, like another guy I like to talk about. I think we talked about also, you know, previously off the record was uh Khalil Mack. Like you know, Khalil Mack came in around this size, and you know, within a few years, like you know. He's like 260, 270 pounds almost, you know. And I think yeah. like Will Anderson, I don't know if he would get that big, but I mean, like, you know, honestly, I mean, in some ways, like Khalil Mack's frame was a little bit more, almost more filled out than Anderson's was, you know. Yeah, yeah. Mack came in way more. He he is a, he is more bendy, but he's also was way more like early in the process of development. He he didn't have nearly as much uh polish as will anderson did in terms yeah. of like just processing the game he was just a a freaky athlete that had good instincts on the football field but just had a lot of stuff to learn and he just learned at an incredibly fast pace so i mean and also there's, no, there's nothing that wouldn't say that will anderson can get up to 265 pretty easily almost in maybe even by the start of this year and yeah, it really yeah. wouldn't hamper him too much as long as the weight is put on uh, uh, responsibly. Yeah, and then, like, two more things I want to say. Like, you started off the, the rebuild last year basically adding, a, like, two players, you know, in the secondary, you know, one linebacker, and you there was no, like, high-end investments made for the front. And, I mean, as if you saw our defense last year, we had problems, problems getting consistent pressure on the quarterback, problems setting the edge. And I think to like with the with the question marks that these quarterbacks have, um, I just think it makes a lot of sense to just you know protect the previous investments that you made last year and get the edge. Also, um, we didn't even talk about him as a leader. Uh, Will Anderson seems you know was like you know seemed like a fire starter for um, you know Alabama. Um, I kind of so I kind of said you know the other day that he kind of reminded me. Like he kind of has like the attitude and the spirit, like kind of like of like a middle linebacker, you know. What I'm Dante, saying? Dante Hightower. Yeah, like like that. I mean, I even I you shouldn't say shit like this, but I was thinking like even like a, I mean like those type of guys, you know, like a Ray Lewis type of guy, like a you know I I know that's kind of wild to say, but you know just like the leader of a defense, you know, he has it seems like he has that type of yeah role. he's com he's comfortable being the the tip of the spear. For for a team and kind of setting up like how they're gonna it's he's basically something someone that if the Ravens were up here and they were picking two or three that no one would question at all that them them drafting Will Anderson but exactly. because because it's the Texans and because they've you know had some rough patches in the in the near uh, near past that it's kind of seems like everything's being second guessed yeah Will Anderson will provide. And that's the other thing I didn't even get to, and you're that you're totally right for touching on this, is that Will Anderson would provide a stability and a leadership with the young players that you got you don't really have with the other guys that were brought in last year. Petrie with a little bit, but even he's not the 
most vocal player or, or he's more of just I'm going to do my job and show and lead through my example. Um, with Will, you have a guy that's just kind of someone you can kind of build everything around a little bit and kind of just start start the rebuild. And what it does is it allows you to also build on his strength. You, you built up a strength in your secondary last year that was definitely the strongest part of your, your entire team. Um, with Stingley and Petrie and the veterans that they put in around there with uh, Steve Nelson and, and Desmond King and some of the other guys. Uh, and uh, Jonathan Owens played well. But if you can bring, like we've already done in this draft, where you bring in Buda Baker now, so your safety's position set with Petrie and him. And now you're going to bring in a pass rusher that's going to speed up the clock and allow guys that are ball hawks um, to really take advantage of that. You're you're starting to to give them give them a fighting chance to have an identity that this year, which they really didn't. It was kind of a team that just had to like scrap and claw just to get any kind of production and any kind of stops and get like really uh, kind of lucky with a lot of the turnovers they got last year. And now that it'll be a situation where you know what this is what we're our team is we're building off the defense we're building off a secondary we can now attack the the run defense in the rest of this draft we can kind of look at it as okay we can we can start to build our defense into a a, a position of strength yeah and also before i make this pick you spoke on in this scenario we'd have baker and um you know petrie and also we signed i'm going blank on his name but we you got yeah, jimmy ward jimmy ward yeah i don't know why i wanted to call him jeff wilson but yeah jimmy yeah. Ward. so yeah. and that's a really good combo like yeah. you could you could drop buddha baker in the slot and, and be okay you could drop Petrie in the slot you have three guys that are super interchangeable and kind of played all over the field and it really gives an identity where you can maybe get a corner later in this draft to pair with singly and your secondary is pretty much set right 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 so all right i'm gonna go ahead and make this pick yeah got it done all right, so let's let's look at uh all right. So we got three now we got three offers at twelve. Mm -hmm. Looks like the top player on the board available is Project right, Jones, man. Devin Witherspoon, Miles Murphy, Jackson Smith and Jigba, Skaronsky, Smith, uh Branch, and then it kind of Van Ness if that's your cup of tea. So this is what we're available. We got pick twelve, uh given up just straight to pick twelve, and we were able to get back. 25, 57, and a Dory Jackson, which would be interesting. Let's see what else is available. Oh, this is a lot of. So in this pick, we give up 12 and 104. We would get back 53, 61, and 64, and also get Cole Komet at tight end, which would be nice, and a future second. So that's definitely something to consider and see the last offer. We move back from, oh, this, is, this is fascinating. Uh, you go from 12 to 28. And you pick up 92, and you also pick up a, a former first-round tackle in Jonah Williams. Yeah. And that, that would be the one that would kind of shake the <laughs> – Yeah, but I mean, the... I think John, Jonah Williams hasn't played well at all. You know, I mean, he's he's been kind of – He's had... he's, been, he's been okay when he – like the most recent – last year, he was okay when he was healthy. But yeah. he just kept getting banged up. Yeah, he's – that's not really the – that's moving far back and you're not getting a real – it's for me, it's – if we're going to move back at this spot, it's either the, the 25 or you or you pick up the three day two picks and you – and you, uh, mm -hmm. and get a future second as well. Um, and a tight end. Uh, let's yeah. see who's on the – let's think about this. I don't I don't really know. Uh, we'll come back. What shit. Can you come back? Yeah, this should be – scroll down the, the – there we go. Yeah, you're fine. Right. You're good. So, okay, you know, so, so in this, I mean, we have, we, you know, we picked up, we have a pass rusher. Mm -hmm. um, Devin Weatherspoon is there. I, I really kind of like the idea of like, you know, really, really going corner, you know? I think. Yeah, I think, yeah. The, I really, the, I really like Rod Jones too, but like, the problem with Brian Jones for the Texans is that even though, you know, it would be a really good pick, it's like the thought of, like, what's going on with, you know, Titus and, you know, like, basically, who who would play center? Like, I mean, if you go and then you draft a center later because you're going to have to, you know, one of these players is going to end up sitting on the bench, which 
I mean, for a year, you know, which isn't a bad thing. And bro- and the truth is, Broderick Jones is probably a guy that would be a future pick in that he's probably better off sitting out for a year and just getting his technique even tighter. And then just, like, you can uh, use him as, like, the extra tight end, like a jumbo tight end almost because he's such a freaky athlete. Right, right, right. Um, But, yeah, I agree. I mean, you're looking at this. If you wanted to just go 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 crazy with uh, D line, you could pair Miles Murphy with, uh, with um, with Will Anderson and kind of just have your D line set because he's a really good run defender. You can play him on the other side, and you would kind of have your your edges set for the next uh, five to ten years potentially. Um, yeah, scrolling down, there's not much. I mean, Luke Lucas Van Ness is, is a is a is a thought here. Um. He's kind of the interchangeable kind of D lineman, but uh, I feel like the like you said the value here is probably at least in my opinion, and, and it seems like you're going the same way. It's it's Devin Witherspoon. Yeah, so if we're going yeah. corner here, the question is, mm-hmm. you go back to the trade, mm-hmm. and is it is it worth doing this or is it worth doing uh, moving moving uh trying to trade for Dory Jackson here who's who's only 27. Uh I mean I think Dory Jackson I I don't which I don't, would be a really good I mean he's a really good number 2 corner if you can get him. He played decently for the Giants this year. He's a guy who's a kind of a ball hawk. The only thing is he's kind of smaller, 5'10" 185. I mean it's similar to Witherspoon's frame, but Witherspoon just plays a little more angry. Um He's a little better in the run defense. So the real question is, okay, do you want to – how much do you want that extra pick and then filling the hole at the other secondary position? It it does – it accomplishes – you would basically just have to move back 13 picks and you would also pick up 57 and, and address the corner. Or do you just stay here and take the corner? I think that, like – so the thing about it is if you move back that far – I mean, I feel like I guess what this is saying is that 57 plus Adore Jackson is worth the first. I would think you're moving back 12, 13 spots. Yeah. Get a first round pick, you know? Right. I get it. But like, um, and we would end up probably going, probably end up probably, I mean, I don't know what we would do if we moved. Someone would, yeah, someone would drop the 25. That's worth it. But, you may go tight in there or something. I but, mean, um, the question is, is like, how good is Devin Weatherspoon? Like, how good would Devin Weatherspoon be on the other side of Stingley? Right. You know I mean? Um, like, cause, cause essentially, you would either have Devin Weatherspoon being a number two corner, or Derek Stingley being a number two corner. Which, and honestly, I feel like I'm willing to. Yeah. I'm willing to. I agree. Bet that. And quickly, just flip through the other uh, trades, just to just to remind to see. Yeah, that would be moving back for – we would move all the way out the re- around and pick up three day twos. That doesn't – neither of the other ones really make sense. So, yeah, I agree. I think that we're going with Witherspoon here is probably the move. Yeah, because – and the, my reason behind it is I think Witherspoon as a number two or even Stingley as a number two is better than Adore Jackson. And you would have both of them under, you know, five-year contracts. Yeah. Um, I think Witherspoon – I would just really like his game. And I think, you know – and and one of the, and one other part of it that's important to consider is that Stingley does better against bigger corners. I mean, bigger receivers and stuff. And it seems like Witherspoon's a smaller guy and quicker guy that would be able to help you out against a smaller, quicker guy. So it's not necessarily you'd have one corner one or corner two. You would have the diversity of skill set that would allow you to match up on different kind of guys. But yeah, I, I I agree. Just just make that pick. All right. Okay, so so far you've pretty much built on a strength. Mm-hmm. Okay, so two trades. All right, so I'll start with the Bears one. The you got pick thirty three, and we get fifty three, sixty one, and two fifty eight for okay. a second round pick. So that's like a two day two picks mm-hmm. and a seventh. Sorry, right, exactly. And then uh, for this one, you, we get Austin Eckler. Pick 33, 104. Well, yeah, that doesn't make any sense for y'all. Let's so just, let's see who's, who's available. Anton Harris is available, which is, I mean is interesting. Trent yeah. Simpson is available. Zay Flowers is available. Dewan yeah, looking, looking through, 
I mean, Hooker's still there at 42 if you if you wanted to solve the uh Oh, we have two back-to-back picks also. Oh, okay. That's right. Yeah, cuz we moved back. So we're back to back here. Um for me, based on what you got, what we needed really in at the receiver position and kind of what the team lacks in speed, I feel like Zay Flowers would be the right pick here, at least with the first pick. Yeah, yeah. Do yeah. you have any concerns with that? Just the, the overall team speed needs to improve on offense, and that'll just make everything easier. Mm-hmm. And, and yeah, and- so so this is a pick that's talked about too. So let's just talk about like what Zay Flowers could bring to the Texans. Like so Zay Flowers, you know, five foot nine, you know, one hundred and eighty pound receiver. Um, very electric, um, very, very sudden, uh, you know, with the ball in his hands. I can't really – it's it's very hard. I mean, you, you everybody has seen the Antonio Brown comps. Um, I've heard people say Tyler Lockett with, like, you know, yak, more yak ability. Um, yeah. Basically what Tyler Lockett – basically what people thought Tyler Lockett could be coming out. Yeah, yeah, He was yeah. more of a yak guy coming in, and he's just kind of been yeah. smart, played a different way to kind of – to, to sure last that, longer, which is good. And I mean, yeah. um, like, so I think he would like, he'd give you like a certain level of explosion that we don't have a uh, yak yeah. ability. I mean, he's a, he's a pretty good route runner also. I mean, it, you know, he's, you can see him on film, you know, winning downfield, you know, turning yeah. people around and stuff. Um, so, yeah, I mean, what do you think? Like, you know, what yeah. So the off the wall people that I personally would be considering here, and it would be kind of a – it would be a future play slash giving more explosion but kind of in a different position. I'd also be looking at Jamar Gibbs and Anton Harrison. Mm-hmm. Anton Harrison and being that you can bring him in. He can be your bully, freaky, big left tackle that can just just t- tear people up. He can – I hate to say it because he's from Oklahoma and it's kind of a lazy cop, but he has like – movement the movement skills of like a Trent Williams like he's that kind of athlete it's mm-hmm. just someone that you'd have to basically be feel very confident with your off the new offensive line coach that they can develop the guy and bring him along slowly mm-hmm. it's a position where maybe that the fact that you traded back and you have two two seconds here that he may be worth the the swing because if you get him in place and you have your tackle set with him and tonsil mm-hmm. um and you're kind of good from there and the only other thing, con- the two other things I'm considering at this point would be Hooker and and even potentially Jack Campbell uh, at linebacker, depending on Jack Campbell would be like the dark ho- dark horse pick. Well, let's just let's just uh, let's just go ahead since we have two back to back picks. Let's just take Hooker here. Um, you want to just just take? I would say. I, well, I I'm think pretty, we take I, are we gonna? We're not gonna get a Zay Flowers later in this draft, right? Yeah, but I mean, we confident. have two back to back picks. Yeah. So okay, so but you, so you you think you think Hooker is I'm definitely saying that, like, I'm saying that, like, Yeah, I'm saying that, that that we should take a quarterback here, and then we okay. can talk about the next pick. You know. Yep, I agree, a hundred percent. I'm I'm yeah. on I'm on I'm I'm on team Hooker. All right, so uh, let's, get Hooker. Kinda... let's get Hooker. All right, so I took him. Now we still have these two dumbass trades. Well, this isn't really too stupid. That, no, that's moving back seventeen spots, and you pick up a future second and give up a seventh. That's actually not that bad. And what's the other one say? Uh, you're going back. That's not uh, bad either. Now that I think about it, 19 trade spots and you get a starting tight end. Um, but but this is a class you can probably get a Cole Komet in the fourth round in this class. So yeah, right, right, right. I wouldn't. Yeah, none of those really. For the kid, this we're not going to trade back that. So we we secure for all the people that were freaking out and and ripping their shirts off and running around like their hair was on fire. Like full Richard Pryor style, mm-hmm. um, when we didn't try to take a quarterback at two, or we didn't take one at twelve, we still get Hooker. We he's a guy that has has pretty much can do everything you need to on the field, like throwing talent wise. He's an accurate passer. He's just someone that you're gonna you're fa- you're basically forced to give that year of reprieve and that year of development the way they did with Mahomes coming from a similar system. Um, and and that can allow a guy that needs those mental reset to kind of and it's it's all kind of being covered by the fact that he's coming back from a knee injury. So there's no nobody that's going to be screaming and yelling if uh, 
if 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 Davis Mills starts the year or if or Case Keenum or or who else, you know, if we trade for, you know, who knows? Maybe we trade for a late pick for like Ryan Tannehill or some crap or trade for what's the other thing, uh Trey Lance that people were talking about. Yeah. yeah I don't yeah, think yeah. that would that that that's something that's not gonna I don't see happening, but that's a whole nother conversation. But yeah, I, I'm I'm 100 percent buying this pick. I think even him at 12 would have been a good value. Mm-hmm. Um, it would have been a little bit of stretch, but quarterback is quarterback, and now you have that. And now we're at the position where do we go tackle? Who's one of the top five, probably top five tackles in this draft? Do you go one of the top five receivers? Mm-hmm. Do you go one of the top two, top two or three running backs? Do you double up on edge rusher with Ojolari? Or do you go top guard? Do you go top tight? One of the top three or four tight ends, Darrell Washington. I mean, Darnell Washington. Or you go top one of the top two linebackers. I mean, even oh. there's, there's even a freaky edge uh, in Keon White that's still available. So, I mean, you're in a really good position. And you can kind of go based on whoever you have stacked as your best player. So who would you uh, – who would you pick uh, based on what your needs? I'm. I think I'm. Go- I would go Zay Flowers just because yeah. this class is not a class that's gonna a receiver talent that's gonna really help you much past this. I mean, you could draft a Jalen Hyatt later, potentially, or or a Tyler Scott to give you some speed. But they're not. They don't have that mix of straight line speed and also all the other nuance that Flowers gives you. Yeah, yeah. Talented. I mean, I. I... Anton Harris is uh is very intriguing. I yeah. mean, Gibbs is intriguing, but I mean, it's I mean, as much of a diverse weapon he is, he's still a running back. And yeah. you know, obviously, you can't depend on him to like really stretch the field. So yeah, think, and that's uh, the big. That's probably the biggest need, other than like mm-hmm. just the offensive line in general and quarterback. Right. Uh. So it's it's kind of it's probably between Harrison and Flowers. Yeah, and I think I it's going to kill us. We're probably going to kill, really going to mess <laughs> mess up our long term. But I think Zay Flowers just makes too much sense. All right, yeah. So taking Zay Flowers. All right, where are we at? Going through up to pick sixty and top of the third round. Mm-hmm. So the Jags are offering pick eighty-eight. Maybe moving back twenty-three spots, picking up a future third. Uh, I don't think that's that makes sense. Um, um, uh, yeah, so we're just gonna outright reject that. Yeah, reject. First, yeah. The first thing I see, and I don't know how realistic it is, is I think this is kind of a no-brainer pick. Um, is Joe Tipman here? Um, you know, we <laughs> center as bad, like as inconsistent as you know. I feel like Titus Howard was, and um, uh, I mean, I know people love the throw their fucking fingers in the air when you say that shit and talk about PFF grades and shit. But it is that's my opinion. Um I mean uh I forget who our right guard name from Jacksonville was last year. Um the center position It was AJ AJ Can, right? Yeah, AJ Can, right. Yeah, yeah. It's between the center position and I mean r- rookie Kenny and Green, um just you know, this kind of makes as much sense as any pick to me. You know, yeah, you yeah. Me personally, I I have Joe Tipman with a higher upside. I mean, he's also kind. Of, he's just a really damn good player. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't understand. There's like a weird kind of like there can people don't realize, I, or they're really just not processing the fact that there can be multiple good centers in a class, and in this class specifically, there's like three or four guys that are day one starters for the most part, depending on your scheme. I think Tipman with his athleticism. Is someone that could work really well in the Shanahan Slowick uh, kind of mm-hmm. scheme. The only other guys that I would really consider here are you picking up Keanu Benton at D tackle. You're not gonna really get a D tackle of that on the, of that level. Um, we I guess we pick again at 73, so maybe one of these D tackles would be there. And the other one would be Julie Sprints, but we already went corner. So and unless they are in love with. Uh, Jalen Jones a corner or even Tyreek Stevens a corner because you never can have too many corners. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other real pick would be Javon Dexter or A-Chain. And I feel like both of those guys are are good, but they're they're not on that same level and impact that a Joe Tipman is. Right. So what if like um 
I mean, let's propose a trade. Then I guess we have a seventy. I'm just saying we have a seventy third pick. Maybe we should try to get up like right around. Maybe we should try to get one of these Denver picks and see. If yeah, we, we could. Uh, let's let's just take Tippmann and see who falls to us. All right, cool. Yeah, I think we'll be fine. I mean, there's yeah. there's there's a good group of uh, D tackles here. All right. Cool, cool. Oh, and he's there. He's there. So. Yep. Oh man, Saints are making a a big old offer. <laughs> yeah, we we're probably, just got we're probably trying to move up for him too. Right, uh, so we already got our center Saints. Sorry, that's a good. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. Um, and then eighty-eight does a future that's third. Not, yeah, that that's doesn't make good. sense either. That's not good enough. So we're gonna reject both of those, and we're gonna get big Keanu Benton. Oh um, man, to, to go. And this with. is a guy that really re he's one of my favorites in his class. He mm -hmm. has some Cam Hayward to his game where he's going to be really good in the run game and then has some upside uh, in the pass game because the way he uses his hands and the way he can really create uh, torque and leverage from his wrestling background. He was a, a longtime wrestler in uh, high school um, and high level. Uh, so, yeah, that's that's definitely – I mean, I don't think there's really anyone. Antonio Johnson for another team might make sense, but we kind of have guys that do that similar thing already, and he, he didn't really test as well as, as – uh, as uh, some people were were claiming he would, mm -hmm. um, and that's really he's. I think Benton's kind of by himself on the board right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, unless like, you go running back here, you know, you could go running back and say we love a chain and we need yeah, more team speed. But, but to me, like Benton, if you go in Will Anderson, like let's just look at the moves we made. Just like you know, I mean, even from last year, you go get you know Petrie, Stingley, you know, and Harris. You know, you start off this draft by going, um, who do we get? Uh, shit, uh, uh, Will Anderson and um, – Will and Anderson, Witherspoon, yeah. uh, Hooker, and yeah. – so I'm just talking specifically on defense. It's like yeah. I think he's kind of – like players like this is the people that really start to tie in everything to, to help the Will Anderson, you know, go crazy. And to – you know, I, I feel like this is just a, the best pick on the board and – there's really nothing you can really say about that. So. Yeah, and and one other comp for Texans fans that will get them kind of excited that I that I've kind of heard and and kind of pretty much agree with with a uh, really good run defender and high upside as a pass rusher would be a DJ Reader. Mm -hmm. So that's someone that kind of is similar where they're just a bully inside and then also really good when they're able to stay square and they don't get get hit with their and kind of turn their hips. That's something you can really you can fix as a uh, D line coach. It's very fixable. So let's do this. Make that the pick. All right. We're able to stay there and get them. Absolutely. All right. So now. All right. Top of the fourth. Mm -hmm. And we'll quickly uh, just click on the uh, Texans uh, logo over on the left. Oh, crap. What did I do? Right here. There we go. Here. Click on that just to see the, the refresher of who we've taken so far. So yeah. far, we've added a, a starting a starting nine tech, uh, a starting corner, a uh, future quarterback, starting receiver, starting center, starting D tackle. All these guys, six guys that could, I mean, say five guys because Hooker probably doesn't play until may, late, maybe later in the year, if mm -hmm. anything. But five guys that are coming in and improving your team right away. Mm -hmm. So so far, so good with this. Um, and I mean, who knows? There could be a lot of teams that have such weird, weird draft boards with the Texans sitting at the top of each round the way they are, mm -hmm. especially if they move back and pick up a couple of extra picks the way we did. Right. That they could really be in position to have a really deep, high level workman, like working class draft that just brings in a bunch of guys that may not be the sexiest players outside of like, say, Flowers and Will Anderson, but like really impact when and really raise the floor of the team. Exactly. Yep. And so, and I think right now we're, we're really in a good spot to uh, just kind of look at all these players. Like right now, a lot of people kind of fell to us. You know, you get, um, I mean, I like, I like these running backs a lot. I like Bigsby a lot. I like Israel a lot. Um, there's a really good linebacker here. I like this, even Zach Harrison. I feel like he's a good, he's a good, Type of edge to play on the other side of a Will Anderson, and um, yeah, man, I'm I'm really liking the board right here. When do we pick next? So who 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 would be your bubble? When we when yeah when we, you can click just click our logo and it'll tell you the next pick. Oh, um, 
this is the only pick. That, and then we pick, yeah, we pick again in like fifty picks or something. So, so what? So what's our? Oh shit, Keandre Miller is there. Wow. Yeah, that's uh, that's who I was gonna say that we should go after because there's yeah. kind of a, I see a difference between him and some of the other. Like uh, Abanaconde is nice, but and the more I watch him, the more he kind of worries me. Mm-hmm. Um, he's a big player, but he doesn't necessarily play big. He doesn't really break as many tackles as you'd like for a 250 to 15 pound player. He kind of reminds me of a Telvin Coleman coming out, kind of a straight line guy. But if you were able to hit him, he kind of it's kind of super dependent on blocking and less of him going to kind of figure it out by himself. Oh, man, looking at the previous picks, Jonathan Mingo missed us by one pick. He got picked literally right ahead of us. That's a, that would have that would have been a <laughs> that would have been real still. Yeah, but um, yeah. So at this point, let's see. We have a speed receiver already. Uh, Zach Koontz is good. He's a good tight end. I mean, for me, Kendra Miller's kind of uh, Kendra Miller's kind of on a different um level from these other guys. At least the way I look at it. Uh, Pickens is a guy that. Big freaky, big athlete that could just fly off the ball and rush the passer really well. His issue is that he needs a lot of work in the run game, which is not really something you want to hear as a Texans fan at this point. You don't really want to invest the pick and have to play a guy a ton. That's gonna that's gonna potentially be there um, and having to get a lot of snaps to see. Oh, Henley. So that's the two. Yeah, right. the, the so I'm kind two of three, those those three guys right there between Henley, Harrison, and Miller is kind of like. Mm-hmm. Who I'd be looking at. Bigsby's nice too, um, but I'm more of a Kendra Miller guy. So what? You can go. Ed Harrison's a guy that's super inconsistent, pretty stiff in his hips. He's kind of a really plays tall, but he's also can get you on like some long arm stuff. He's got some upside because of his size. Um, I think we've gotten D line twice, so we're not necessarily super in need of that. So for me, it'd probably come down to Henley and Miller. Uh, just look at running back and see who else is on the board. Yeah, that's maybe a situation where we can go running back next pick as well. Yeah, yeah. I, I see Tajay that. Spears is still there. McIntosh. Yeah, um, Chase Brown. Uh, Chase Brown, because we're trying to look for guys that are more pass game oriented and kind of give you a different element than Pierce does. Uh, I mean, uh, I think Rashawn Johnson. Uh, he, he can catch. He's just a big guy. You know, he's yeah. he's not gonna give you a ton of different things. Um, I mean, obviously, Tajay Spears would be the the perfect pick if we were able to hold off and get him next pick. Uh, You think, like, I mean, maybe it's worth, well, what linebackers are there later? Yeah, let's see. Yeah, see, he's, I mean, Demarion Obershawn is is good. I like him, and Doreen Williams is nice, but Henley's legitimately the best. He's the best cover linebacker in this whole draft. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I think the only, uh, the, only qu- the only question is, would they would they be willing to do it with the fact that we drafted Christian Harris last year? You know, like and it's a very similar player, um, mm-hmm. skill set wise. I think Henley's just better in in general, uh, in terms of like just coverage and athleticism and. Explosion. Well, yeah. I mean, and I know they're both smaller, but like maybe. You know, yeah, six foot two twenty five is not super small. So yeah, I and mean, yeah, he could put on another five ten pounds, and you could play them together for sure. Yeah, and that's so, what I'm gonna say. I mean, remember, like we have one edge. I mean, you know, there's ways that you could. I mean, we got we got uh, Benson, right? Um, yeah, yeah. So we got Benson Anderson. I mean, you know, push come to shove later, not later this draft, but I mean, as you know, we move the team will move on. You know. You can go get a bigger edge, you know. You can go get a bit, you know, a couple. Yeah, and there's other guys. If you click on edge, there's other guys later in this draft that can give you similar, uh, like guys like this. See, Isaiah McGuire is a big edge. Um, Ali Gay is a guy that's more developmental, but he's a big edge that can play good in the. Yaya Diaby is an explosive big guy. He's six three, but like two sixty and plays closer to two seventy. Right, right. Um, Fahoko. <laughs> Uh, the kid from Rice. Um, I can't always screw up his name. Uh, I mean, even KJ Henry. I mean, there's some. There's still some guys. That's the thing that's beautiful. The beautiful part of this draft. I think the way the depth is and 
of no, this no, class no, and everything. No. I think Henley's the move. Yeah. Right, right. Cool. Oh, we're down. All right. So All let's right. see. Uh, let's see. Uh, that, that's not a horrible trade, but let's see who's. Oh, Spears is still there. Oh, yeah. Ooh, so here's the thing. Here's a question. You got Spears. We ha You have. McIntosh, right? Yeah, McIntosh. I mean, Spears is the better running back out of all those guys. I'm not worried about that, but I was looking more at Luke Schoonmaker's there. Mm -hmm. uh, you can even double up a receiver, Doring Williams, 6'2", rangy linebacker, um, if you felt that was a big need. Uh, Ojomo's a really good, like, an interior guy that would be able to – that plays the run like a like a madman. He's not – he's got a lot of work to do in the pass game. Michael Wilson's a big receiver, good route runner, kind of like a – a Michael Thomas light kind of prototype. He just he scares me because he hasn't stayed healthy. Um, but yeah, what are you looking at? I mean, I think it's pretty simple to go Spears here, and Spears would really and he would kind of continue the whole thing of tiny running backs, little not tiny but like short running backs behind big lines, and mm -hmm. I kind of like that dynamic, um, especially with the guys that have really good contact balance and also have explosion the way Spears does. My one concern with Spears is does his medicals come back clean? Because he's had some knee injuries in previously, but nothing nothing that limited him this past year or the year before. So is there anything else that uh anything else you would be looking at? No, you... no, no. I'm I'm just thinking like I do like the idea of Michael Wilson. I like Schoenmaker. I want so look at look at receiver and look at tight end real quick then. I, I see what, uh... should, uh, I'm wondering if we should take that trade now. Yeah, we could move back I mean, pick, add a, pick up another pick. Uh, Andre is – well, I don't know how to say his last name. Yeah, I, I, I Iasavas or Iasavas. It's it's Greek, I think, so. Um, like, um, you can you know? Um, yeah, he's someone that could be better in the pros than he is in college. Um, It's really Michael Wilson, and then there's a drop. Right, right. A tight end – I mean, shit, it's pretty similar that way, too. I like Josh Wiley. Um, mm -hmm. And and Brennan Strange is down there for some reason at 263. Right. I Man, mean, I he, there's no way that he lasts that long in real Shoemaker, life. Shoemaker has a 986 rat score. That's crazy. Yeah, he, he's a crazy athlete. Um, yeah, it's really no no wrong. I If I had a, if a tiebreaker was health and everything, I think I'd, I'd – there's a reason Michael Wilson's there mm -hmm. injury-wise, you know. Um, I think it's between Schoonmaker and his Spears. Look at the running back. There's no other running backs that really. Right. Another question is when our next pick is. Yeah. I mean, or the or another thing is like if you, you know, what I'm saying if you had to pick, you know, yeah. Let's see. Um, just click on that logo and see. Yeah. One eighty-eight. So twenty-seven picks from now. What's the uh, trade the Saints are offering? So you go back four picks and you pick up two. You basically pick up another sixth, seventh round pick. Mm -hmm. Um, this may not be horrible in this draft, but I mean, I feel like, like if you, two guys here. Thing, like if you get Pierce, I mean Spears, um, you get this guy. Like my thing is like, okay, what if we don't end up getting another running, like a running back that truly complements Pierce, but you get another guy that's similar to where like you can kind of just really play smash mouth football, you know. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing with Spears, though, is you can do smash mouth and you can and he can be a scat back like he was he yes. was in between the tackles. Tons of just it, well, he wasn't he's a small guy, but he's he's kind of a one of one left in the class. It's yeah. just the weather of not you think Shoemaker is also one of those guys. You know, there there are three running backs at the top of the board. I'm sure they'll all be gone pretty quickly. This is, uh, this is tough. Yeah, what would you? I mean, shoemaker. Like, so put it this way: here's the other thing to look at. Spears is a guy who's produ produced at a way higher level than shoemaker or Wilson. Um, shoemaker is definitely an upside pick. He's an upside pick, right? I would feel more comfortable after we after we secured a running back, then kind of taking a swing at one of these upside because there's some other upside tight ends. All right, that's all, yeah, it's true, true, true. All right, I'm going yeah. with Spears. Yeah. All right, here we go. And Stu Maker is gone now, but that's cool. 
Um, All right, Let's see. Um, All right, so now we're at this point. Let's see. Yeah, it's good that we went running back because all the running backs are gone. Um, this is Luke Allen. <laughs> yeah, for me, the out of these, yeah, there's no there's no real running backs left. I mean, you could have gone Deuce Vaughn, but he's not that same kind of. See, I was gonna say if we went Shoemaker, we could go Muhammad Ibrahim, but like he's yeah, he not... doesn't he doesn't have top line the top end speed that uh. He's just another like that. he's another guy like a Pierce that you would just come in and just bludgeon. Yeah, you can get a Muhammad Ibrahim style player like undrafted damn near. You know, it's like in the seventh round. It's like you can't really. That was the difference. You know, I, tight end. There's Josh Wiley and Brendan Strange, and Brendan even Davis. Strange, Davis, yeah. Davis Allen's really good at at contested catch. Mm -hmm. Strange is super explosive. We could be looking at him as, as, as really as our next pick because he's kind of faller faller farther down the board. Um, Go back to the overall to see. For me, Jalen Graham's a guy that sticks out. Another linebacker that is kind of a chess piece. Mm -hmm. He didn't have great. He didn't test good, but like you know, he's a good player. Um, yeah, he's a guy that was able to cover a lot of different. Uh, let's see, during Thompson Robinson, you could double up a quarterback. That's kind uh, of Jay, how Jay Ward's a guy that can play all over the second. If you want a super diverse DB. That played at corner, safety, and nickel at LSU at a high I level. I can't lie to you, man. I know, like, for, uh, you know, I know this wouldn't be a popular thing. You want know, to double up a QB? I don't mind it. Out of all these quarter, out of all these players, I mean, why not? Why not? Yeah, you can get someone. Com uh, let's see. Is there any other position that we haven't addressed yet that before we kind of gamble on a second QB? So um, that that's yeah. like a screaming need. I mean, yeah, obviously we could yeah, always yeah. do another. Uh, we could use a nose tackle, but we can get one in the next. There's they're available later. Edge. I mean, we hit edge. We hit corner, secondary. You know, got a got one quarterback. Got a receiver. Uh, went O line. You got a you know physical three tech, right? Yeah, three tech, uh, five tech, kind of just right uh, in the right with the uh what they like. Yeah. Um, um, we got a got a fast, speedy linebacker, and yeah, the best player. cover linebacker in the draft, probably. I just feel like I just feel like, man, honestly, and I know you have Mills and you have Keno. Maybe, maybe you shouldn't do it. Why? I mean, it's four quarterbacks. I mean, who? I mean, is it really crazy to carry four quarterbacks? I you know, yeah. I mean. I think you could always you could always you know, move you could always there? move you could always move Mills if you think you can get value for him, you know. Like if he plays well in the preseason or who I mean you, but, but what other players are there that you I mean Yeah, there's no one on the board right now that, that screen I mean for me the best player on the board that's gonna help you are it's Jalen Graham a linebacker and it's Jay Ward at, at safety because he plays everywhere. Mm -hmm. Um, but you're pretty deep at safe in, at in the secondary. I mean, Jay Ward would be a guy that can you just is like a utility player, like Jalen Mills was for the for the Patriots and the Eagles. You know, just play literally all over. You um, said Jay Ward and who else? And, and Jalen Graham is the is a cover linebacker. Mm -hmm. They don't do him justice in this uh, the way they his res and everything. Uh, maybe he didn't time incredibly great, but. On the from what I remember watching, he just kind of covers everybody at a real high level. Um, he's more of a coverage guy, so I guess you have a coverage guy already. For me, it's it's probably down to Jay Ward and Dorian Thompson Robinson, or if there's a, I mean, you could double up a running back. Is there a a big running back that you like? Uh, let me see. When, so we picked thirteen picks from now. Yeah, and then you have back to back. Oh one. Mm -hmm. You said, you said backs. I mean, yeah. I mean Cam, Cam Peoples is big. Yeah. Dwayne McBride is interesting. I mean, he's a big old dude. 2-2-2-2-A. Two, 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 two oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've watched him too, man. Yeah, um, he's, he led the country in rushing. Um, I, still feel like, I still feel like that's kind of a reach, you know? Yeah, I agree. I say, man, uh, I mean, I just fucking like, let's do it. Play. Dude, yeah. it's it's not a big deal, yeah. yeah let's go play, I, I love DTR. Um, I would be happy, be happy to get him. All right, two hundred one. Uh, and look, Jay Ward's still up there. Um, who else? Graham. 
Marte Mapu, and so is Shaka Hayward. That's another linebacker. I mean, mm-hmm. I think at this point, uh, Jalen Redmond's a D lineman that's got crazy upside with his athletic tools. Mm-hmm. But you're scrolling down pretty far to get to those guys, you know? So I feel like the way the board's set up, Jay Ward is probably would be a great depth pick here. And plus, we have pick at two, two or three. I mean, he's a guy that just plays all over, great ball skills, everything. Right. I mean, I, I would I would do backflips if he made it this far. Yeah, okay. Right. Okay. Oh, no. Someone got my guy, Nesta Jade Silvera. Um, mm-hmm. uh, um, let's see. Martin Mapu. <laughs> that's an upside. Yeah. Uh, he's a he's a small school guy from I think Sacramento State. Is that what it is? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, who's a good athlete, but just you know, high risk, high reward. Let's see. Jalen Graham's still there all the way at the top. Do you think uh, he can play with our other linebackers? Six one two yeah. two. Yeah, he's bigger. I mean, he's. At worst, he's a good special teams player. Um, there's him. Let's see. You could just roll. You could just gamble on uh, do spawn and see if, a, even though he's small, like, uh, Redmond, Shaka Hayward. What about? I Hazel? think Shaka Hayward's really good. Uh, Hazelwood's. I mean, Hazelwood's interesting. He's a big. That's a kind of interesting pick, bro. I mean, six yeah. six foot. He's, he's one of those. He he's basically your game. If you're picking him, you're gambling that he's going to be a better pro than he was in college player. Um, and it's not a horrible gamble. You want to go him, and then maybe like if you, I mean, at this point, bro, like I think it's worth it. I mean, look at D tackle real quick. See if there's any D tackles because we still need help, more help there. Uh, Redman, Carl Brooks. There's some Project Martin. Carl Brooks is the – he's a stand-up edge rusher at 300 pounds that they used at uh, Bowling Green. Mm-hmm. He's a guy that you'd probably get to lose some weight and then uh, increase his explosion. Redmond's just freaky as hell. He had some of the best numbers at the combine. Uh, Jared Clark is a nose tackle I like all the way at the bottom. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of nose tackles on the board. So, yeah, there's no one that jumps out. Uh, is there any offensive linemen you like? Yeah, let's look. Just real quickly before. I think Hazelwood probably is going to be the guy. Galvin, super flexible. Oh, Anthony Bradford's there, guard. Oh, true. Damn, he tested like a fool, huh? Oh, my God. Yeah, he's he, a, he can play tackle. When do we pick again? We pick again at two. So in twenty-seven picks, he'll probably be gone then. Huh? Yeah, he'll be. If you want him, you gotta take him now. Versus Hazelwood. Hazelwood's more of a gamble. He's gonna give you a guy that can. Yeah, I think you go Bradford here, man. Just get another bully. He's a really good run blocker. Yeah, let's do that. All right. Glad we checked. All right, two thirty. They are offering a to move back 17 picks and pick up a second pick, mm-hmm. which isn't horrible. But let's see who's who's available. And uh, Mafi's still there. Is there any tackles that you like? We looked at tackles, right? There's no one really there. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, guard is after you get past those Mafi. It's kind oh, shit, of like, my bad. Oh, I'm tripping. You're good. Okay. Mafi's good, but. We just picked. I mean, shit, we just got to Yeah, go. yeah, he's the only one. Hazelwood's still there. Yeah, let's get Hazelwood. Yeah, let's he's do that. Probably receiver late. Or, or, wait, wait. Or do we do, we go Dwayne, Bri- Dwayne McBride here. He's still uh-huh. there. He, he's not going to be there next pick. He's a, he's the second running back on the board. I would be surprised if he was there in 17. I mean, who has the most upside? I mean, <sighs> I mean, they're both. I mean, McBride is way more like you can. You're more likely to find a, a running back at this point than you are a, a receiver. True. But I mean, it let's is go a running back. Let's go running back. Because yeah, then, I mean, then we, well, he should have been picked way earlier. That's a good. That's a good value. 
Hazelwood is gone. That's all right. All right. All right. We have, is this the last pick that we missed that are relevant here? Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. Is, is this where we get our nose tackle? Or let's see who's available. Oh, look at tight end. See if um, Brent Strange, Brennan Strange is still there. He is. <laughs> super right, super unrealistic, you. but. Six foot three, two. I mean, he's, he's freaky. He's there's no way he makes it this far, but yeah, do it. All right. So we quickly, I mean, you had it's just downloading a picture of it. Let's see. Can you see this? Yeah, I can see it fine. I mean, can you see the download? Uh, no. All right, let me. Uh... Let's look at it one more. I just saw the I saw the Google Chrome screen. That's all I saw. Can you see it now? Yeah, that's perfect. All right, so we'll quickly just run running back through it. Um, if they could come out of draft with this many guys, I mean, pretty much up and down the draft are guys that you could see on the field next year, outside of the the two quarterbacks, and those are just like those are value picks. Mm -hmm. You just don't you don't really have a chance. To, uh, see those kind of players at that point. I mean, you added a safety, it's a full safety, a starting safety, a corner, mm -hmm. an edge, a receiver, a center, a, a D tackle, a linebacker, a, a running back. Those are all guys that you could see starting next year, and or or like getting at least fifty percent care, you know, snaps with uh, Spears taking like half of the workload away from uh, Pierce to make him fresher. And then you got like quality upside guys with Jay Ward can play all over. It's the potential that he just becomes a, a killer in the secondary at mm -hmm. either slot or safety just because um, I mean, and he can play he's similar to like PJ Williams was for the Saints where he can play corner in a, in a pinch, you know. Um, he's got that length. And then you got Bradford who could end up being your starting guard. Uh, he could, you could develop him behind uh Jack Mason and take over for him. I mean, he's an absolute dog. Like, I'm surprised Bradford hasn't been. I'm. So, I wouldn't be surprised if he goes in like the same place like Ed Ingram went in the third. I think Ed Ingram went in the third round last year, and he's. Oh a, I think he's a better. He's on that same level. He went to the Vikings, and he's starting now from day one. So, and McBride's a guy that you 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 talked about it. He get your thumper. You get your big back. Mm -hmm. um, your 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 Pierce. Uh, what was it called? Your Pierce uh, insurance. Insurance. There you go. Got to think of the word. Had a brain fart. Um, I really like this draft, man. You know. Yeah, this is super high level. Uh, we can only hope. Sexy, we don't. We like don't. This. We don't get a sexy quarterback. But I mean, you're. you're uh, we get instead of getting a sexy quarterback, we get two guys that have that have, that have legit upside. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right, y'all, make sure y'all like, sub, and share, and we'll have some more stuff coming, like, you know, very soon, bro. This is the No Agenda Sports Podcast with Leon and Josh, man. All right, y'all take care.